So we took a look at how did the city estimate that liability. It's consistent with what the way it's been done in the past, and we found that that was reasonable. The other sensitive estimates relate to the defined benefit in the OPEP plan. So we talked a little bit about those liabilities in the one slide. So there's a number of assumptions that go in to determine what your pension liabilities are and what your OPEP liabilities are. And I won't run through all of those, but a couple of the major ones really are the discount rates that are used, mortality tables that are used, investment rate of return, and in the case of OPEP, healthcare cost trends. And so we take a look at what those assumptions are, and management determines those assumptions to see, okay, do those look consistent with what we see with other communities? Do they seem reasonable? Do the healthcare costs seem consistent with the experience that the City of Taylor has had over the last few years? And we did find that those, those assumptions, with a couple, couple caveats there, which we'll talk about in a minute, are reasonable and, and appropriate for the actuaries to use in determining those obligations for pension and for OPEB. And then the last estimate is really related to your water and sewer billing system. So uh, at the end of the year, there's an estimate of the unbilled water. So you don't bill at June 30th every year. There's a cycle that rolls into that. And so we take a look at how those estimates are pulled together, the subs subsequent actual billings that occur, take a look at the trends from previous years for those same periods of time to get comfortable that those estimates do seem reasonable. If you go over to page five, which is section two. So there are a few items that we identified during the audit from an improvement standpoint, and so I wanted to, to briefly cover those. Um, as you know, you moved, over, you moved over to a new IT system this year from Great Plains to Oracle. Uh, that was a big undertaking for the city. It was you know, probably long in coming, and uh, I know it was a lot of effort on the city's parts to have that go as seamless as possible. Uh, we did test to make sure that all the accounting balances came over at the right amounts from one system to the other, just as a sidebar note. Uh, but there are a few things there in terms of stre strengthening the controls that we think would be important with the new system, and, and, and there's, I think, an opportunity here to, to, to put some of these in, into effect. And one of them is, is to make sure that the individual who is responsible for assigning permissions for use of the system, in particular any of the modules that affect financial reporting, is not someone that also can go in and actually uh, post numbers to the system. So the assigner should be different from somebody who's actually working within the accounting system. So that's an item that we thought would be important to, to separate really that responsibility. And then secondly, uh, adding, in, adding users or deleting users, we thought the process there could be more formalized or it's well documented why someone's actually being removed from the system or someone being added to the system or someone in the system who's adding, get, re receiving additional functionality within the system. And so that process, we would feel that there would be some additional um, improvement opportunities there in terms of the controls. Uh, the other two items on that page, the allocation of charges to other funds. So you do have charges that go to other funds for services rendered by a general fund. And so uh, making sure that the costs are commensurate with the charges is something that we always take a look at. Uh, you do have a process for allocating those costs. But as you continue to evolve as a city, as processes change, we feel that those, those, those allocation methods should be revisited periodically, not necessarily annually, but periodically, every couple of years, to make sure that the, how we're charging those other funds is commensurate with the actual cost being incurred to serve those funds. And so that was really the second item. And then the third item, we did, we did have a couple procedural controls related to authorization and documentation for overtime matters. And so we've, we've discussed those uh, with the city and with city management as well, but we did identify those in the, in the, in the, uh, the letter here. If I go over to page six, so we talked about estimates uh, for pension and, and, and OPEB liabilities. A couple things, though, related to that that we think could improve. Uh, relative to the pension plan, the, the long-term expected rate of return on the pension plan assets really should be consistent with the city's targeted goals for their investment mix and the percentages within that investment mix of returns. And so that was a little bit misaligned in terms of what was being used by the actuaries. We did get comfortable that it was still reasonable in terms of how those liabilities were being determined, but we really, we really think that long-term long rate, expected rate of return should align with what those plans have set up as their investment mix and expected returns within that investment mix. And the pension board set those investment mixes. Um, are, yes. are you saying that it should be the same across each of the pension boards, or? No, no, so each pension board is going to determine what's the, the investment mix that makes sense for their plan. And so there's gonna be a, some judgment that goes into that on how you wanna allocate those assets. But, but each plan has done that. Their mixes are not exactly the same. 
And so whatever that mix is of types of assets and expected return on those assets and the aggregate of that really should be the discount rate that's used within that plan. And so we'd like to see that, see that aligned or closer aligned. And then relative to the OPEP plan, uh, there are some new mortality tables that have come out that are strictly for governmental plans. So they've been tailored to governmental plans. So going forward, we would recommend that the city use those, long, those mortality tables as opposed to the tables that are being used today. And this is a comment we've had across a number of our communities now because those longevity tables for, for governmental employees are, are a recent addition in terms of, uh, of data that's being used uh, for actuarial determinations. Um, so that was really the main points that I wanted to make sure that we talked about in the letters. Uh, I know we went through a lot of stuff, you know, fairly quickly. Um, if you have, you know, subsequent follow-up questions uh, that, that Bill or I or really, you know, Carrie or Nikki on our service team can help with, we're very happy to do that. We periodically have had questions where we've gotten back to you with some additional data or, or, or other information that's been requested. So, you know, that, 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 uh, that holds in terms of us uh, being more than happy to do that uh, on behalf of the council. Okay. Look, I just want to say you guys always do a great presentation. And you guys make it, you really simplify it for us, and I appreciate that. And, um, I can't thank you enough for coming down and presenting this during this time. Thanks for having us. It was nice to get out and get a suit on again, to be honest. Man. <laughs> Your hair is a little longer than normal. Yeah, I know. Yeah, don't look at the back. I'm trying to hide that part. But, uh, yeah. So, Please. Uh, in other words, we're doing fine. We're doing a good job as a council, as an administration, as a city, especially our chief financial officer. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the, the way I would describe it is this: is, is that, so the answer is yes. Yeah, I think you're you know you came through this pandemic year in pretty good shape overall. You've got some deferred things that are rolling into this year, so you're going to use some of your fund balance this year. But you're sitting in a decent position with your fund balance at the moment. Uh, going forward, you know, continued caution on a number of the items that we talked about as you do your budgets and as you look at, you know, future capital investments. Uh, but, you know, you're in a good position as it stands today. So, and, and Jason and his team have done a, a really good job on, on getting us the information we need and, and doing the accounting and financial reporting. That'd be true. Um, thank you and the departments because we're also doing a virtual audit at work and it's, um, very it, different. <laughs> it, it, it is. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a huge pivot, no doubt yeah. about it. And I know it goes without being said because we've said it, but again, I think there was a few notes in the actual full report in our packet about, you know, uncertainty of revenue sources um, to really watch the spending, especially on the general fund, just on things that are needed or um, certainly don't want things to fall into disrepair, you know, so making sure we keep up with those, but yes. being tight. Yes. Yeah. yeah, there's I mean there's always a balance there, right? In terms of you want to continue to do you don't want to have the deferred maintenance and just get too long, okay? Because eventually that leads to a bigger cost over time. So yeah, I think you've done a really good job as that slide indicated on continuing to invest. You're really close to your depreciation line now. Can you maintain that level these next year or two? Maybe not maybe you can, but maybe not quite that much, but still continued investment will be important. We, we see a lot of it in the roads area in particular. That's the spot. It seems like communities are, are still trying to, 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 to spend the dollars in the right places. And, and I, I've, I've driven around Taylor. There's probably a few things in, in Taylor that could use a little bit of upgrade as well on the roadside of things like many communities. 